Welcome to video three of three, where I'll show you how to install the Trex Enhance railing system. The first step to installing the Trex Enhance rail system is to measure and cut the post sleeves to the desired length. Post sleeves are sold in 48 inch lengths at Lowe's, which will accommodate both horizontal and stair applications. For horizontal applications, I cut these to 40 inches, which is most common. We'll install the stair rail posts and railing shortly. Those posts will be a little longer. For this cut, the miter saw produces the cleanest cut. The next step is to install the post skirt and the post sleeve in that order. If you put on the skirt second, you might scuff the post sleeve as you slide the skirt over the sleeve. It's now time to get started on our rail sections. In our railing kit, we have our top and bottom rails, our balusters, a hardware kit, an adjustable foot block, and instructions. To support the bottom rails at the correct height, I've made three blocks at three and three quarter inches wide. At three and three quarter inches, we've preset the correct height of the top rail at just over 36 inches, which is necessary to comply with the building code. Next, I set the bottom rail between the post sleeves. I then position the rail so that, one, the distance between the last baluster hole on each end must be a minimum of one and nine sixteenths inches to allow sufficient space for the bracket, and two, the distance is the same on each end, which ensures the space between the last baluster and the post sleeve will be identical. Now I just mark the side of the rail with a pencil. With my bottom rail marked, I can cut both the bottom and top rail to length for this section using the miter saw. Since this is your first rail, make a practice cut or two near the end to get the feel for how the material is going to cut. Next, I drill the 3 16 inch hole in the center of the bottom rail in length and width for the foot block, which I'll put in later. To allow water to escape, drill two additional holes evenly spaced on each side of the foot block. I then position the brackets from the hardware kit on each end of the top rail on the same side as the baluster holes using the three number eight by one inch self-drilling screws which are provided. Make sure the brackets don't extend past the end of the rail. If they do, you'll create an undesirable gap between the post and the rail. Next, using the same fastener, I attach the brackets to the bottom rail, but this time to the opposite side of the baluster holes. So far, we've drilled holes in the underside of the bottom rail for our foot block and drainage. The rails are now cut to length, with an even margin between the last baluster hole and the end of the rails, and our brackets are attached with the proper screws. The next steps are to insert the balusters and then attach the rails to the posts. For this next step, on a clean and flat surface, I laid the bottom rail on its side. I then used a scrap piece of one inch decking to support the balusters as I inserted them into the bottom rail. Starting on one end, I fed the balusters into the top rail. Once they were fully seated in both top and bottom rails, I used a ratchet strap just to snug the two rails together. I then set the rail section on the three and three quarter inch blocks and centered one end at a time on the post. To help hold the section in place, I used a clamp, which only needs to be snug so that I don't damage the balusters or post sleeve. Slowly drive the provided three inch wood screws through the holes in the bracket and into the post sleeve and post. No need to pre-drill, but do go slowly and set your drill clutch to a low setting. If you overdrive the fastener, you'll see the post sleeve distort and potentially crack the sleeve. Foot blocks are required to help support every section of Trex Enhance railing. The adjustability of these foot blocks makes them very easy to install. I first turned the turn mount so that it could easily fit under the bottom rail. Then I positioned it so that the nub was engaged with the hole I previously drilled in the rail. Next, I twisted the turn mount until it was fully tightened in between the deck surface and the rail. With the mounting hole facing outwards, I installed one number eight wood screw which was provided and pulled the sleeve down to cover the turn mount and screw. Installing the stair railing is my last step in this project. Trex Enhanced Stair Railing also comes in a kit. We're gonna start by marking and cutting our rails. First, I'll temporarily install my lower post sleeve, but don't cut it to length just yet. Push the bottom rail post sleeve out so that the sleeve is touching the wood post. 
and place a scrap piece of deck board between the posts which acts as a spacer to elevate the rail section to the code compliant finished height. Set the bottom rail on the spacer. Temporarily clamp the bottom rail to the post sleeve such that the baluster holes are roughly 2 inches from both post sleeves. To make it easier to measure the distance between the baluster and the post sleeves, I like to place a baluster on each end, then temporarily clamp the top rail in place, then make my adjustments until both end balusters are aligned with the post sleeves, keeping a distance of 2 inches or more to accommodate the rail brackets. Next I mark the rails for length with a pencil. Using a speed square, I mark the post sleeve at the tops of both rails. This way, we'll know at what height to place the rails when we return to attach them to the post sleeves. The next steps are to cut the rails and install the brackets. Drill a 3 16 inch hole, which we'll use when we install the foot block. The major difference of installing the rail brackets on stairs versus horizontal railing is the addition of these adapter brackets. The adapter bracket snaps into the standard bracket and is labeled top for the upper post connection and bottom for the lower post connection. Set the clutch of your drill to a low setting and go slow so that you don't snap the stainless steel screws. Using the 1 inch screws from the hardware kit, flush the bracket to the end of the rail and attach to both ends of both rails. On the bottom rail, attach the assembled bottom stair bracket to the side without baluster holes. Next, we'll use the mark that we made earlier that signifies the top of the top rail, which will help us identify where we cut off our rail post and sleeve. We want the distance between the bottom of our lower post cap to be the same as the upper post cap. That distance on this deck is 2.5 inches. The post cap has a depth of 1.5 inches. Therefore, we'll cut the post sleeve at a total of 4 inches above our mark. Now that we know the length of our post sleeve, we know what length to cut the post. This is an unusual cut, so choose a saw that you're most comfortable with. Make sure you're in a comfortable position and take your time. Safety is the priority. This cut is going to be concealed by a post sleeve and cap, so it doesn't need to be perfect. With our rails cut to length, our brackets installed, our posts and post sleeves cut to length, we're now ready to attach the rail to the posts. I've clamped the deck board, which is our spacer, to the bottom of the bottom rail. I also like to clamp my speed square to the post sleeve, right at the line I made earlier, so that when I position the rails, I know I'm at the right height and can focus on keeping the rail plumb and centered. The 3 inch sharp point wood screws provided in the hardware kit work nicely without pre-drilling, although you're welcome to pre-drill with an 8 inch drill bit, but through the sleeve only. Make sure you set your clutch to a low setting. Insert a few balusters into the bottom rail at a time, then lower the top rail down onto the balusters. I find that lifting and rotating the baluster up into the top rail helps speed the process. Once all the balusters are in, then I make sure that the top rail is all the way seated and everything is snug before attaching the top rail to the post sleeves. Again, using the driver extension, I simply repeat the same process as the bottom rail. Foot blocks are required to help support every section of Trex Enhance railing. I first turned the turn mount so that it could easily fit under the bottom rail. Next, I twisted the turn mount until it was fully tightened with the mounting hole facing outwards I installed one number 8 wood screw, which was provided, and pulled the sleeve down to cover the turn mount and screw. With a little silicone on the cap, and some tape to hold it in place while the adhesive cures, and we're done. Now you've got a beautiful 12 foot by 16 foot Trex Enhanced Naturals Foggy Wharf Deck with durable railing that you can be proud of for years and years to come. No sanding, no staining, no stress. Thanks for joining me today and remember to check out Trex Deck Kit at Lowe's so you can start your installation today.